When did this pilgrimage begin? Oh, this pilgrimage commenced right at the time of the Tohoji Danans and was practiced by every known people that came along after that. This place here was known as, and has been written as, the Great Pagan Festival. It originated in paganism, but as we grew, we incorporated better into it. We're here now in the city at the moment, Dan. Has it changed much since its inception, do you think? And it has fallen down a good bit. The centuries were naturally bound to have an effect on us. The principal thing is that for the 70 centuries, people have come and gone here. You start at what is known as the gap here. Certain prayers are said there, and then it's up to an individual themselves to say what prayers they like, going around the outside of the wall, of the outer wall, three times. And then they come in and say their prayers inside, in the circle, in the car. And uh, there are various stations marked with crosses. I think in pagan times, these marks were circles. And there's one of them still to be seen here, on one of these stones. The circle is still to be seen. Well, would you say that the ritual has changed very much from the early days, even though it's now Christian? Uh, well, the time, anyhow, is the same. The only difference May being day. that... Yeah, May day. That we have 12 days now, instead of the original one, because of the change in the calendar. People still preferred to pay the rounds here on the old May Day, so it grew into a 12-day pilgrimage, May 1 to May 12. So the only difference is that people say Christian prayers? That's it now, yes. Well, of course, there is another two. Uh, around wars had an effect on it, naturally. How do you mean? Well, people come in there. You see, when transport took over, people came from far away here. And there were various games played, etc., etc. And uh, we'll come up to 1939 the last great war, and that had a very upsetting effect on the place. As a matter of fact, it finished the aspect other than the religious side of it. I, this sporting event, the dancing, that died away. In former times, the dancing was done in a field close by here, known as Phil Dennis's field. And uh, time pushed on, and I suppose we got a bit modernized, and there was a dance hall built close by. That had an awful upsetting effect, naturally. Come on, Kelly. Come on, Kelly. Come on, Kelly. Come on, Kelly. Come on, They came from Cork City here, May Day, with their, all their games and all the rest of it. The place would be thronged with people. You and you could hear was... jesters and jugglers and all the voices mixed together. Harp players. This was a great place for harps. And a lot of old relics have been dug up, found around the place. Harp tuning keys, various other things. Into a tent we straight we went, I'm telling you know why it lies. With cakes and sweets she did me sweet, with sea grass and bull's eyes. Each hour in dread outside my head and the whiskey spilling free. And I was fed with barley bread by my morning gal, McCree. We're here in the city and we're here in County Kerry. And there's no fish shops here in County Kerry or in the city. We're all holy people. As you see there down below, look, there's all holiness. 
we are holy, I'm a holy man myself. But on the 1st of May, for about three years, or four maybe, a man used to call to me, you know, coming to the city you now with a push boys. And when he'd come over to the city, I, I don't know whether he said around or whether he said prayers or not, I, I couldn't tell you, sir. But he went over and he went across the valley into my house. And of course, I being so generous, I gave him a cup of tea and was delighted because on May Day here we always appreciate everybody and to the kind of a, an annual holiday now if you like. And when he had his tea finished, he went home. And when I went out to, the, to, to where I kept my, my cows now for milking, and you know, livestock and young stock and all, I found this little bag. In it was sandwiches. That was the first year he came. And then, we got, in about three months, I lost a young little, you know, one of my stock, a young one. The second year came and I lost another one. He came again. And he was coming every year for about three years. The following year went and he came again. And the same thing happened and I lost another little animal again. It could vary now, you know, from six months to two years. Accidentally, accidentally, pure accidentally now. In fact, Jesus, I wouldn't fall maybe three feet and I get him thrown there and I, and it was a case of do away with him. And it went down for four or five years. But anyway, the local woman said to me, you have a very bad logic. And I decided then, with other information from other people, that I'd lock up. And I did. I locked up. And from that day until the today, I never lost an animal since. There was this aspect of leaving various things behind them. They would leave hairpins, ribbons, handkerchiefs, or coins. This was a pagan aspect of the thing. They were uh, leaving their troubles behind them, I presume. And I came here in the Duncan chair, to my room here, and I had a stick. They had limp here on. They left the stick here after me, and that knee never troubled me since. If a person had a, a sick cow, he drove her in here on May Eve, let her there overnight, in the hope that she would be cured tomorrow. She often was, they claim. The new milk they spilled out on the door to the byre and the doorway to the dwelling for the prevention from these people crossing over the doorway and taking with them the profit of the person's farm for the coming year. On May morning, the well was a place that had to be guarded because these people who practiced this art, if they got to the well and skimmed the water, they could take the profit of somebody's property for that year. And uh, the prevention was they laid flowers, white pardon, golden cups around the well. 